I think the universe is absolutely and utterly giving. I've never seen anybody dedicate themselves to something completely and fail. I've never seen somebody eat right, go to the gym every day, train really hard, and not be in good shape. I've literally never seen it. The universe is extremely giving. If you actually try, and you actually want it, and you're actually not making excuses, lying, talking shit, you're gonna get what you want. So when I see people who don't have what they want, I consider them losers. And this may be elitist, I understand that. But if I put myself through endless pain to end up where I am, it's very hard for me to have sympathy on the man who's afraid of pain. You're avoiding pain. I've been through endless. I now have everything I've ever desired. You have none of the things you desire. Am I supposed to feel sorry for you? Because you took the easy way out? Am I supposed to look at you and go, oh, poor dude? No, you were a fucking coward. You didn't go through the shit I went through. You didn't put it on the line. So you deserve your substandard reality. That's what you deserve, you're a fucking loser. Because if you actually wanted it, and you actually tried, you'd have it. You could have anything you want. Universe is super giving. You want a fucking Ferrari, you can have it. You want that bitch, you can have her. You can have anything you want on the planet. There's not a girl I look at that I want that I can't have. Not one. That's my reality. There's not a car I can't have, there's not a house I can't buy. If I want to go to a yacht, if I want to go to Antarctica, if I want, there's nothing I can't have, at a bam. Because I've decided to become this man. It's the same for absolutely every single one of you at home. If you want it, you can have it. If, you, if you're sitting there saying, oh, but I tried my best and I still didn't get it. You're lying. You didn't try your best. That is a fucking lie. The universe gives it to everybody who genuinely tries. And I know that to be a fact because this world's competitive. We're all competing against each other. And the majority of people don't try. Like I've, I've achieved this amazing life and I've tried very, very hard, but it could have been harder. I mean, was it that hard? About 86% hard. It wasn't 100% hard. Why? Because the competition's zero. Everyone is a fucking loser. It's amazing to me. Everyone's a loser. I can say to somebody, listen, I'll make you a millionaire. Do this. Oh, yeah, but you know, the kids are home from school now. <laughs> That's it. They're done. And then they'll sit and go, oh, I really wish I had some money. You are a loser. I will sit here on this podcast. People will listen to me for hours. And I will say, listen, I have hundreds of millions of dollars and I will teach you how to make money. CobraTake.com, I have a school, university designed specifically to teach you how to make money. I clearly know how to make money. You clearly like what I say. You obviously believe I'm intelligent and integral and I won't lie to you. And still, a whole bunch of people will sit there and go, hmm, yeah, anyway, next video. And then they'll say, can't afford a Ferrari and wonder why. Like they'll be confused in their minds how they didn't end up getting what they want. Because you're a fucking loser. Lo that's why. And, and the majority of people are losers. And this is goes back to why, when we were saying earlier, how I know the elites view us. Because I'm from a council estate in Luton, a single parent household. And I've only been rich 10 years or so. And I despise losers. So imagine you're a billionaire born into a family, a lineage which has controlled Earth for hundreds of years. Imagine how much they despise us. Do you think they give a fuck about putting a bullet in me? Do you think they're gonna have any sleep at night missed? Do you think they give a solitary fuck about you missing your fucking parents' funeral because of the common cold? They don't give a solitary shit. Why would they? Because I already know how I feel when I listen to losers complain. Because this is what happens at a certain level of competence and power. You just get to a point where you're like, I'm tired of hearing your fucking excuses. That's bullshit. And you become to a degree, yeah, cold and psychopathic. It's true. That's what happens. And I get it all the time. I get thousands of emails a day. Everyone I grew up with, people I know, I get it all the time. They'll message me, hey man, you know, just unlucky. You are not unlucky. You are a lazy fucking loser. That's, that's you are not unlucky. You are breathing. You're lucky. The unlucky ones are gone. You're alive and you are a lazy loser. So a loser is anybody who does not have everything they want at the drop of a hat. That's who I call a loser. Because I have absolutely everything I could ever possibly desire. And if I wanted something that I couldn't have, I guarantee you, you can speak again in a few months and I'm fucking happy. I guarantee you. Because if I want something and I can't have it, I can't sleep. When I was broke, I couldn't sleep. I don't know how there's broke people out here sleeping just fine at night. Going, oh, you know, inflation's 
gas prices are six times, everything on the news is a lie, I never stand a chance of ever getting rich, where's my pillow? Like, what the, f what the fuck is wrong with you people? I, I go to bed at night as a teenager and think, I looked it up on the internet. It was a Honda Civic Type R. I wanted one, it was like 38,000 pounds. I had no money, I had less than 50 pounds on my bank account, couldn't afford it. Then I looked up how much a Ferrari cost, 210,000 pounds. And I said to Tristan, my cup brother, I was like, there are people with 210,000 pounds for a car. And he's like, yes, so? I'm like, no, no, not so. How? If I worked my job for six years, and saved every penny. If I walked to work and didn't eat, I couldn't buy this car. How are people doing this? I couldn't sleep at night when I was broke. I knew that everything was a lie. I knew the matrix was lying to me. I knew I had to find a way out. I was sitting there going, I refuse to live my human years and be some second class citizen peasant when there's people out here who get to do whatever the fuck they want. I, I couldn't tolerate it. And I was so uncomfortable that it gave me the motivation I needed to escape. But the people who go, oh yeah, nice Ferrari, yeah. Back to the TV. Dummies, losers. And the thing about the world is, we need losers. I, I'm not mad at losers. If that's the reality you've chosen to live, you get one spin in this version of life, and you decide you want to be a loser, that's fantastic, because I like, I need, my cars need cleaning, you know? My hotel room needs cleaning. I have a party with all these beautiful women that's a bit of a mess. Please, go pick it up. Somebody needs to do that shit. I ain't gonna fucking do it. If I had to walk into a hotel room and clean up after some other man's party, I guarantee you I'd do whatever it fucking took to become rich so I didn't have to do that shit anymore. But you wanna do that for 20 years? Thanks, friend. <laughs> Someone's gotta flip the fucking burgers. Someone has to make the fries. I want a happy meal now and again. But I don't feel sorry for you people because you fucking deserve it. Because it's a decision you made. You made that decision. If you're sitting at home and you say, I don't want to be a loser, you know what to do. I told you how to escape the matrix. CobraKitTape.com. You can join. I'll teach you. But if you're going to sit there and go, nah, maybe this guy with hundreds of millions of dollars is trying to scam me out of 25 pounds. All right, smart ass. Have fun at McDonald's. Get fucked. I have no sympathy for these people. Zero. Do you have a little bit of a system you can share on how to make money i know we've got cobratate.com we'll yeah. keep shouting it out but any tips for someone who's ready yeah but they don't yet know the how completely so we teach it inside of the real world of course i keep mentioning it because it's so important but there are three keys i believe to making money the word of the day first one's perspicacity most people go through life and they do not pay attention I've said this before and I want to stick by it because it's so important. You need to pay attention to every single time you spend money because you cannot make money. You're not the Federal Reserve, you're not a government. Governments make money. All of us take money from somebody else or a business or a government. We take money from other things. So the easiest way to learn how to get good at taking money is to pay attention to every time someone takes money from you. So next time you buy a coffee, don't just buy the coffee and drink it and think nothing of it, like every brokey. Don't do that. Say, okay, I, why am I buying this coffee? Okay, I want the coffee. All right, why am, I, why am I buying here? Well, this is on my way to work. Is there any competition around? Do I also want breakfast? Do they sell breakfast? No, they don't sell breakfast. They can probably make some more money if they're selling breakfast. Anyway, I walk in, there's a long line. Why is there one member of staff? I'm low on time. I'm about to leave and not buy the coffee. They're about to lose money because it's taking too long. Most of the people in this line are businessmen. Why is there not a cute girl behind the counter? I bet if they paid a cute girl a little bit more, they'd still make a bunch more money because people come in here to talk to her. Think. And then you, what you'll do is, as you go through life, every time you spend money, is you'll realize the problem is not how to make money. The problem is how much time you have because there's endless business ideas. There's endless ideas. I walk into a coffee shop and by the time I've walked out, I already know exactly how to open up next door and outcompete them head to toe. I already have worked out how much is the rent, how, where are they fucking up, what are they not selling that they should be selling? What are they doing good? What are they doing bad? This chair is too hard. I'll wreck them. And I'll send it. And now my network is so powerful, which is the second point network. I can send a few messages on WhatsApp and make a bank transfer. And two months later, there's a brand new coffee shop next door with my name on it, put them out, put them out of business. So the first thing is you have to pay attention. Because if you pay attention, you'll start to learn that money is everywhere. Every building is owned. These are skyscrapers. Billion, 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 billions. Every apartment nowadays is a million. 
million, million. You drive down a street in London, you're driving past trillions of dollars. There's money everywhere. It's all around us. When I was broke, I thought that the world was broke. I thought that there was no money. And then I got rich and realized that I was completely and utterly wrong. There's so much money. It's everywhere. If I go to try and buy a plane or a jet, they're always sold out. My yacht is a fucking six year waiting list. I want a Bugatti, they launch it, the email comes to my email address, two minutes later, gone. Like there's so much money. If I want a diamond watch or a million dollar watch or a million dollar Rolex, you can't get this stuff. There is so much money out there. Once you get to a certain echelon, you realize there's money fucking everywhere. So there's plenty of money in the world. People with no money are just not very good at taking it. So you need to start paying attention. It's the first thing. Second thing is network. It's hard to make money if you don't know anybody who has money. If you sit in a room full of ice cream experts and all they talk about is ice cream, how to make ice cream, the different flavors, how to store it, how to move it, how to sell it. Even by accident, if you hang around with these people long enough, when someone asks you a question about ice cream, that's what you're gonna, you're gonna know the answer. You're gonna say, you know what? That's because it's pistachio, and that needs to be two degrees higher than chocolate. And you're gonna look like a smart ass. So if you sit in a room full of people who are making a bunch of money, everyone understands this. Your network is your network. You're the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. Everybody understands this. And then they still hang around with fucking losers. Because they're dummies. You're right, I am the sum of the five people I spend the most time with. Anyway, this is my friend Nick. He's so funny when we go drinking because he gets really drunk. <laughs> losers. I don't talk to anybody who is not winning. Everybody whose phone, uh, every phone call I will answer, if I answer a phone call, it is from a winner. I don't talk to losers. Everyone I talk to is rich. Everyone I talk to is making money. Everybody. If my entire reality is full of multimillionaires making money, how am I not gonna make money? And this is why network is so important is because it's the same reason that wolves hunt in packs. If you're a lone animal, you have one set of eyes. But if you're a pack, you're watching every single angle, every single side. Perhaps I might miss something. I'm as perspicacious as possible. But one of my friends identifies that the war in Ukraine is gonna change and the Russian ruble is gonna pump. You can make a bunch of money on a forex trade, for example. I may not have noticed, but he'll notice. Now I've made a bunch of million dollars to get a text message, right? Hmm. Because I have friends who are paying attention. All of us are paying attention. So your network is super important, that's another thing. We'll go into this because I have something called The War Room, which is also on corporatetech.com. I let people read for themselves. But that's my private network. And we specifically talk about money and, and a few other things. But that's is that like more like a mastermind? It's, it's the real world's how to make money and The War Room's what to do with money, if that makes sense. Yeah. It's all on corporatetech.com. I don't want to get off track, but it's there. But second is network. And third is to identify the reason why you don't have as much money as you want so far. And there's one of three reasons. You are either lazy, stupid, or arrogant. Those are the only three reasons anyone is poor. And you have to identify and choose which one it is. The majority of people are not the one they think they are. The majority of people are the one I'm about to say at the end. So let's start with lazy. There are a lot of lazy people. The unfortunate reality about money is that you are competing. So it's player versus player. It's like anything in the world. If you want that beautiful girl, so does everyone else. You have to win the competition. You want that car, you have to get it first. You want that money, everyone wants that money. You have to compete. It's competitive, business is competitive. You are competing against people like me. You're competing against people like the people in my network. You're competing about people who only talk about money, who understand money very well, who operate in jurisdictions all around the planet, who are extremely well connected, who know things before you know them, who have mass influence and mass power and mass resource. You're competing against me. This is what you must understand. You're not waking up going, I want to make some money. You're competing against people like me. You're competing against billionaires. You're competing against hedge funds. How do these hedge funds keep growing? Where are they getting that money from? From the brokies. They're robbing you. They're robbing all the poor people from the pension fund, dummy. That's where they get it from. This is who you're competing against. So the competition is absolutely and utterly fierce. Understanding that, understanding that you're a man with a small pistol up against a mighty army, if you want to add a little bit of laziness on top, you're fucked. So when I say people are lazy, they go, I'm not lazy, I work hard every day. You work eight hours a day? You work eight, eight? The fuck? If I'm awake, I'm working. I'll be driving my Bugatti Chiron through Dubai, working. I'm texting at the same fucking time. I don't take a second off. I don't take a minute off. I don't relax. I don't rest. I don't stop. 
I don't chill, none, ever. I'm either asleep or at work, that's it. Second I wake up, I check my phone, I begin working. I go to the gym in between sets, I am working. I'm online working the entire fucking day until the second I go to sleep, I am at work. That is all I do. And you are at home competing against me and you want to watch a movie tonight and then say you're not lazy. You're fucking lazy and you're gonna lose forever. That's laziness. Next is stupid. I don't think many people are actually too stupid to be rich. You can be below average IQ and still get very rich. Very, a very small percentage of people are too dumb to be rich. The slave minds, they'll never be rich because the matrix tries to keep you poor because when you're poor, you can't think like we talked about earlier. So everything the media tells you is designed to make you poor. They want you broke and struggling because if you rely on the government for food stamps, then you can't argue with the government, can you? So that's what they want. So anyone who believes in the matrix and believes in media and believes in the lies they're told, anyone who sits there and goes, that's true, that it's literally designed to make you broke. That's why it's all a scam. Do your GCSEs, do your A-levels, get in debt, go to uni, get out, get a shit job, get a mortgage. Don't worry, when you've paid that mortgage off when you're 61, then you'll have enough money to go to Spain for holiday. Then your pension comes. Oh, government doesn't have the pension money anymore. Funny enough, hedge fund stole it. Pay half your money in your life in tax. Oops, de doops. <laughs> and then you wake up one day and go, whoa, I just got fucked. So the whole scam, the whole story is a lie because they want you broke. <laughs> they don't want you rich. If you're rich, you won't listen to them. So all of it's a fucking lie. And intrinsically, we all know this, right? If I, when I pull up in one of my 30 cars to a gas station and people look at me and they see a Lambo or a Ferrari or a Bugatti or a Koenigsegg, whatever I'm driving, nobody goes, wow, he went to school. No, they think drug dealer, gangster. They're thinking, they're thinking he broke the rules because anyone who follows the rules doesn't get shit. It's all a scam. It's all a fucking lie. So the slave minds are fucked, but those are the only ones who are too stupid to make money. Anybody who understands that the matrix is lying to them is smart enough. So very few, very small percent are too stupid. Inside of our school, at the height of it, before the matrix attack, we're relaunching now. We had 175,000 students. Wow. When we had 175,000 students. Maybe 2,000 we kicked out for being too stupid. It's step by step. Do this, do that, do this, and don't be lazy. The fuck? It's not that hard, right? So stupid's not the problem. So we have people who are lazy, very few are stupid, but the majority, the main reason most people are broke is because they are arrogant. I will sit here and say all the things I've said. I will do this, take time out of my life for free. Somebody at home will watch and digest it for free. They will agree with the things that are being said or at least be entertained enough to continue to watch. And then I'll say, I'll teach you how to make money online. CobraTape.com, you can join the real world. And they'll sit there and go, nah, I'll do it myself. They're arrogant. They have these egos from fuck knows where because they didn't earn it. And they're just too arrogant to listen to anybody. I became world champion by listening to my coach. I didn't become world champion by walking in and saying, I'll do it myself. <laughs> That's not how you get anywhere in life. You have to listen. If, if Mike Tyson were to walk in, or if Elon Musk were to walk in here and talk to me about money, I wouldn't be sitting there going, I can do that. I'd be like, oh, Mr. Elon, richest man in the world. Hello, very nice to meet you. Please, even though I already understand I don't want to launch a car brand or put rockets in space, please, you must know some things I don't know. How do you deal with the currency fluctuations? Does it does, does inflation impact how much it costs for you to send a rocket into space? Like, I'd ask him something that's useful, right? But so, some people are so brutally arrogant that they'll sit here and they'll listen to all the things I said, and they'll agree that I'm intelligent, and they'll agree I'm massively successful, but they'll sit there and go, yeah, but you know what? I'll, I'll do it myself. I don't want to join that school because you know, I'll, just do, I'll do it myself. They're arrogant. Everybody's fucking arrogant. I sit with people who I used to go to school with from Luton who are still broke and tell them how to make money. And you know what they do? They answer back. Yeah, but you know, it's not that simple because you know, the wife gets the kid, da, 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 and you know what, and I, I don't like to do things that way, the way I like to work. The way you like to work is why you're fucking broke. So what the fuck are you talking about? You just sat here and wasted 10 minutes of my time. I told you how to take your business, or painting and decorating, or whatever the fuck you're doing, and make a serious amount of money, and now you're telling me the way you like to work? Then stay fucking broke. The fuck you want me to do? What level of arrogance? But this is people. They'll sit with a multi-millionaire and tell you their view. Oh, I think that the... Know when you're out qualified. 
and accept it and learn. So we all do. I'm not gonna get, I can't play piano for shit. The piano teacher walked in here and said, this is what you do and I said, well, I like to move my hands this way. What kind of dumbass? But this is the, this is the arrogance people operate under. So I'd say 20% of people are lazy, 20 to 25%. A large portion of the world are not lazy. They're actually working exceptionally hard, but they're doing the wrong thing. 5% of people are too stupid. So say 25%, 5% is 30%. But 70% of people are brutally arrogant. And this is why they are poor. The world is hyper competitive. If you're gonna be a man who's gonna sit and say, I'm just sad, you are always gonna lose in competition to men like me. No. And there has to be losers for there to be winners. I am tired of sympathy. Sympathy doesn't work for anybody. I'm not gonna sit here and be sympathetic for people who say they're too sad to try hard and be their best. Guess what? Perhaps I was sad every time I did exactly what I was supposed to do and trained anyway. Perhaps I was afraid when I fought anyway. Perhaps I was tired when I worked anyway. This is how you get ahead in life. I don't have a fucking ounce of sympathy for these people who sit here and say, well, I feel this way, so I can't. Then don't do it. Stay down there. The winners are at the top, and the winners at the top don't give a shit about how they feel. We wake up and we perform regardless of how we feel, day after day. So if I'm gonna ignore my own feelings, I'm certainly not gonna take into consideration anybody else's. Yeah. Why am I gonna ignore how I feel and make sure I'm constantly performing regardless, flawlessly, and then sit and go, oh, but he doesn't feel good, so he's allowed to fuck up. No, you are not. You're not allowed to fuck up to your ancestors or to God or to yourself. You have to perform. This is how it, this is what being a man is about. The baseline of masculinity is doing things you don't feel like doing. I can't comment on being a woman because I'm not one, but the baseline of masculinity as a whole is the thing that makes a good man a man is that he does what he doesn't want to do. He doesn't want to work and he works anyway. He doesn't want to go to war and he fights anyway. He doesn't want to get up, he gets up anyway. That's the whole point of it. We didn't want to die in the Titanic. Guess what happened? We died in the Titanic. You can't sit there as a man and say you don't feel like it. You're not allowed to not feel like it. You're supposed to do it anyway, regardless. Yeah. So when a man sits there and says, oh, but you don't understand, I'm struggling with motivation. If you are struggling with the motivation to be a winner, then stay a f loser. No problem, stay yeah. a loser, don't care. Because in my circle, there's no losers around me. Your energy is disgusting, I find it revolting. I don't like weakness around me, even near me. Even people coming up saying hello to me. If you're depressed, don't even shake my hand. I do not have time for losers on any regard, winners only. Men who have mental health issues, I hope them, I wish them the best in the world. But when they come to me and say, and I get this all the time, Andrew, I have this problem, I'm depressed and I can't go to the gym. I say, no, I disagree. You're depressed because you don't go to the gym. If you go to the gym, you might start to feel better, right? I'm saying you can't sit as a man and afford the luxury of saying, I have a mental health issue today, I'm sad today, I'm stressed today, I'm emotional today, I can't work. Because you will lose against the men who don't do that. As a man, it's player versus player. It's ultimately competitive. And as a man, you have to outcompete the other men who are prepared to get up and do it anyway. That's how it works. There's no such thing as saying, I'm sad, I need two weeks off. Not as a man if you want to be important. If you want to be important as a man, you have shit to do. You have duties. This is how it exists, this is how it's always been. If I feel sad, it does not change how I act and it does not change the things I do. If I don't feel like going to the gym, I go to the gym. If I don't feel like working, I will still work. I lived, I lived in a world for 15 years where I didn't feel like fighting because my nose was broken, but I had to fight anyway. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these people come up to me and, and they say, oh, but I feel this way. I don't put a, a huge amount of importance on emotions. It's not that I don't feel them. It's that I don't think they have much to do with anything at all. If I wake up in a happy mood and I have a business to run and females to cater for and things to do, if I wake up in a sad mood, I have the same shit to do. I'm gonna get it done. So where's the importance of it? It's in my mind, that's how I view it. Like, how does it affect what I'm gonna do? Well, nothing, it doesn't. It's not gonna affect how I live my life, so why sit around and think about it? This modern obsession with happiness is, is the number one problem with the world. Because I don't, I really don't believe humans were ever evolved to be happy, mm -hmm. were we? If you're gonna try hard at something, and I mean genuinely try, 99% of people will get adept at X thing. It doesn't matter what it is. If, if, if I decided I wanted to be good at piano and I gave it everything I got, I'd, play, I'd be able to play piano. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like there's, there's people with one hand who can play piano. And it's just how much effort you're gonna put in. I don't struggle at anything because if I decide I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it. And I've never struggled with motivation. So if you don't struggle with motivation, then you're never gonna struggle with anything in life. I mean, I'm naturally adept at some things and there's some things I'm not as naturally adept at. 
But if you're prepared to work, you're prepared to work. So no, I don't struggle with anything. Life is not a struggle to me. I do not view life as difficult in any way. I think life is extremely easy. I believe that all of my problems are going to be fixed by me. That no one else is going to wake up and give a fuck about my problems the way I'm going to give a fuck. Nobody else is going to be prepared to go through what it takes to fix them but me. If I'm in the ring getting an ass kicking, not my coach, not my corner, not my fans, no one's going to get me out of there alive but me. As a man, we live in hyper competitive environments. I don't think enough men understand how competitive the world is. If you want a girl, you're competing against other men. You're not the only man who had the idea of getting that girl. There's no girl you're going to see and go, oh, I'll get that girl and didn't cross anyone else's mind. Everybody else wants her. You have to outcompete other men. You have to be as competitive as possible. You have to be as successful as possible in all realms. You have to be as good looking, as funny, as smart, as spontaneous, as interesting, as charismatic, as rich as possible. You need to try very hard to be your absolute best. And as you become a better man, you'll crack through different tiers of attractiveness and eventually you get to the top and you'll be able to have any girl you want. But the truth is, I have a lot of guys ask me, similar to your question, a guy will come to me and go, how do I get a girl? I'm like, bro, you're a loser. Yeah, but I know, but how do I get a girl? Well, you're a fucking loser. You're a loser. Why are you asking me? It's like saying, how do I win a race with a push bike? You're racing Ferraris. What do you want me to do? Yeah. There's only so much you can do. There's only so hard you can pedal. There's only so many tricks and, and tips. There's only so many game things you can say, yeah. so many pickup lines. If you're a loser, it's gonna be very, very difficult and it's gonna get harder and harder. The game is rigged to become harder and harder for men. It's not getting easier, it's going the other way. And if you're gonna be on a racetrack and there's gonna be Ferraris there, and you're gonna be on a pedal bike or in a Nissan, you're gonna get smoked. That's yeah. the game. You have no. to up yourself, you have to improve yourself. I'm not gonna to lie to anybody here and say you don't have to improve yourself, you can stay a loser and, and get chicks, because you can't. Yeah. Uh. You can't. This idea of random, just random headaches is bullshit. It's bullshit. If you have a headache, it's for a reason. Did you hit your head? Yes or no? Well, no, you didn't hit your head. So are you dehydrated? Probably. Have you drunk a bunch of water? Yeah. If you really drink a bunch of water and you didn't hit your head and your head still hurts, have you laid down, had a little nap? Maybe you were tired and now you feel okay again. Why are you taking drugs? I know people who just randomly four times a week, I have a headache, let me just take this pill. What headache? Was your brain falling out? Are you, is your brain rotting? Why do you have a headache for no reason? It doesn't make sense to me. It's stupid. A lot of it's psychological. A lot of it's placebo effect bullshit. And it's an entirely wrong worldview. You can't just go through life medicating yourself for imaginary fucking illness. It's dumb. If you want to get rich, you have to act quickly. You have to do things fast. Speed is rule one. Not enough people understand the, the importance of speed because every hour you spend not making money is an hour you're not going to get back the sooner you turn on the tap to the money the more money you're going to make you have to be very very quick life only teaches you lessons the hard way there's no other way to truly learn a lesson the thing is you'll notice about people is that when life is trying to give them a lesson the easy way they'll ignore it oops oh like you'll see it all the time people will some they'll have close call close call close call close call they won't pay attention until something really bad happens and then they'll be like oh no i'll do anything to take this back yeah. that's how people learn no one learns the easy way it takes a very smart person to learn the easy way everybody only learns the hard way ever the number one thing people don't have control of in their lives is their mind but what's funny about that is the only thing in life you can truly control is your mind you can't control other people you can't control the weather you can't even control your health. Your heart might stop beating. You don't make it beat. It just goes, so it's gonna turn off one day. The only thing you can control in, the, in your life is what you think in your mind. So if you're gonna sit there and go, oh, I'm sad, well, you, you can change that if you actually try, but you don't, you just accept it, right? So people have lost control of, of their own minds. And I don't understand why you would allow your mind, your own mind, to take power from you. Why would you believe in your, let your own mind convince you you're not a lucky person or, I'm not this, or I'm not confident. Why would you let your own mind sabotage you? I can never be depressed if I never slow down. Speed is extremely important. Speed defies gravity. How, do, how does a plane fly through the air and defy gravity? Speed. It's moving too fast to fall. If you're always attacking life, if you're always doing things, if you're always making more money, if you're always traveling the world, doing this, doing that, new car, here, there, new podcast, meeting James English, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> you know, if you're always doing things all the time, unhappiness can't catch you. But I also know that speed is a, is a fantastic way to be happy all the time. I'm always, forward. I'm always looking forward to something. I wake up every day excited. I'll go do this today. I'll go do this today. I'll go do this today. And I very much live my life in a frame of no, I have to do this. It's very much a I get to do this.
This is another thing that a lot of people make a mistake with when I talk to them. Like, oh, I have to go to work today. Change your language. I get to go to work today. Imagine you had no job. It'd be worse, right? Because otherwise you wouldn't be working. So you get to go to work. Oh, I have to fix the car. At least you have a car. You get to fix your car. Most people don't bought one. Oh, I have to go get the kids. You get to go get the kids because you have these beautiful children who love you. You understand? People's even their own language is wrong. It, the world is, can be framed. Maybe I'm completely crazy. Maybe I'm full of shit, like you said. Maybe I am. But the frames I've installed in my mind are all beneficial to me. So if that makes me crazy and full of shit, good. <laughs> because I can't become depressed. So you can sit there and tell me I'm full of shit while you're depressed, and I'm happy. And I would never want to adopt the thinking of a depressed person. People will, people will shield laziness with anything. No one wants to admit they're lazy. So they'll shield it with disbelief. Ah, oh, that's a scam. Or, I don't work hard, I work smart. Bollocks, more, more cover. For just Anything it takes to say, do you I don't want to work. Do you believe in that, work smart or not harder? I believe in both. Yeah. But there's a time when it comes to work smart. And most people are trying to do the smart work before they do the hard work. It's kind of like talent, right? You don't notice if you're talented at something until all the hard work's done. Yep. I could be the most talented tennis player in the world. But I don't play tennis. So if I go down the tennis court, Joe Schmo is going to smoke me. I don't get to see my talent until I've worked so hard that I'm in the top 1%. And now I'm beating them because I have some God-given gift. Yeah. You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to do the hard work first. If there's no hard work, there's no smart work. So someone's going to sit there and go, I work smart, I don't work hard. So I only have to work an hour a day. If working smart gets you a lot done in an hour a day, then you should work smart for 12 hours a day and yeah. get 12 times the work done. I, I am absolutely and utterly a believer in hard work. I'm a proponent of hard work. I have all this money and all I do is work. My entire life is work. This podcast is work. I'm getting in the car. I'm going to another meeting. Work. I'm going to go to the gym so I'm in good shape. Work. It's all work. My entire life is work. And people don't want to look at life that way. They want to talk about work-life balance and being lazy and all this crap. I don't believe in any of that. I believe in if you want to win, you have to outcompete the man who's prepared to do nothing but work. It's player versus player. If you're going to sit there and go, I don't want to work more than an hour a day, well, the guy who does want to work more than an hour a day is going to beat you. And no matter how smart you are, there's always a smart dude who's doing the same smart work you are for more hours than you're doing it. That's just the nature of the game. The way that humans work and the way that we are, we've evolved as a species is that we don't really learn lessons unless they're learned the hard way. Yeah. I believe that unless a lesson has taught the hard way, you're not going to learn it. You can have so many near misses and people won't learn their lesson. Bro, you must know a guy who goes out there, nearly crashes his car, nearly crashes his car, nearly crashes his car, doesn't slow his ass down until he wrecks it. Yeah. Like, this is how people are, right? So you need that pain for the lesson to sting enough to really genuinely go inside of your mind. And it's the same with everything. It's the same with driving a car or business. Truthfully, if you want to learn a lesson about business, you're going to have to suffer at some point, right? So we always say that most people are not successful with their first companies, X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. I get that. The truth is there's a lot of people who make a lot of money with their first company, but they just spunk it, act an idiot, and it all blows up in their face. And that's, the, and that's how you get the discipline on your fourth company that when you have three million in the bank, you just leave it there. You know, it's yeah. and don't and don't be done with it. So you need to you need to go through some pain. You need to experience some negative things. You need to have to, uh, to a degree some trauma to really even learn any lessons. So, yeah, business studies. You're right. The book that's that's not going to teach you anything about business. You need to get out there on the streets. You need to you need to make mistakes. You need to suffer. You need to have the tax man knocking at your door. You got to deal with all that stuff so that you make sure it doesn't happen again. I really think that, that humans are stupid enough to only learn the hard way. That's and, and life really doesn't have to be that complicated. When you see somebody that has something you want, you just got to try and work out how they got it. Yeah. And that's the missing part. Most people see people with things they want, and they don't do the, the second half. They don't try and work out how they got that thing. Oh, my man has a Ferrari. Okay. I wish I had a Ferrari. Okay. They don't sit there and go for an hour. How did he get a Ferrari? It doesn't cross. That That part is the part they don't want to do, right? They just go, oh, he has a Ferrari. Wish I had a Ferrari. And they go back to TV. Yeah. And that's why they lose. It's player versus player out here, man. It's on the street. It's not easy. For every dollar you make, for every pound you take, you took it from someone else. You don't make money. You take money. People don't understand the way that money works. You're not the Federal Reserve. You can't create money from thin air. Every single pound in your bank is money you took from someone else. And when I say take, I don't mean it in a negative way. You might have convinced them to give it to you. You might have a coffee shop. I'll give you a nice coffee. You'll give me some money. Cool. But you still took his money, yeah. right? So if you're out here trying to take stuff from other people, don't you want to have a team? You want to do it by yourself? You want to be Rambo? 
Because you can get two of you doing it. You get two of you. you, That's right. So the whole idea of this lone soldier, this Rambo, I'll do it all by myself, that's all dead, bro. You need to have a team. It's player versus player. And for the same reason, if you were out here on the street and you want to defend yourself, you want your boys around you, it's the same thing with trying to get rich. And you're laughing with your boys. The brokey days are great. And I'm not complaining about being rich. Obviously, I worked hard for this, this, and it's a fantastic life I live now. But I think without those brokey days, without those original days to compare it to, without that juxtaposition, then I don't think being rich would be fun at all. I think it's only fun because you can compare it to the days when you weren't rich. That's the only thing that makes it fun. The only thing that makes my $10,000 stake fun is that you can laugh saying how you never had 10 grand in your bank till you were 27 years old. Yeah. Like that's the, otherwise it's boring. Otherwise, you, okay, stake. And I think if you're born with too much money, that you'll never truly be happy. I think you need the broken days are the best days. You meet somebody wealthy, their family at one point was not wealthy, and then the one shows up. One person changes the family tree forever. In my family, I'm the one. And it wasn't because I wanted it or I hoped for it. I fought for it. I want to fight for my family. I want my mom and dad proud of me. I want me proud of me. I want to look in the mirror and be happy with the man I look back at, that he gave it everything, that he went for it. That's what I want for you. I want you to be happy with you, not cool. I've seen all kinds of cool guys my whole career. Cool guys go broke. They have a good two or three years. Players who implement strategies that get focused and intense, they win decades. You gotta win year after year after year. I'm almost 50 years old, man. I've got a loaded calendar, I'm after it. I'm not casual, I wanna win. You hear me? Wake up! You want to win? You want to be a millionaire? You got to quit being so casual. You walk slow. You implement things slow. You talk a good game like you're going to be somebody. Business is a sport. It's competitive. You got to get focused and get in a hurry. Wake up, brother. If you make a couple of these adjustments, man, you could change your life. You could change your family forever. It's not casual. You can change the chapters in the book of your life if you want to. You're the author. It might be year two, three, four before you get your big win, but you could decide now, I'm gonna walk, talk, and be a different person. You're the lead character in the story of your life. But too many of you let the, what I call the extras of life dictate where you're going. Y'all hear me? Here's the truth. Most people's dreams can be bought. With enough failure, they will sell their children's dreams. They can't still fight. With a little success or a whole bunch of failure, most people will sell their will to win. Some of you have sold it because you're making a little bit of money. You don't work like you did when you were making nothing. Some of you will sell your win for some failure. You're probably viable. But if you decide that my will cannot be bought, I'll keep fighting for my family. I'm the one. I'm going to change my family tree forever. Decide now, you're gonna keep negotiating the price or can you not be bought? That is you, that is you. But no one can do it for you but you. You must understand that. I remember I was playing a game with my nine-year-old son, John Leslie, and I beat him 10 straight games in a game called Connect Four. And I got up, I said, I'm ready to go to sleep now. John Leslie said, no, you can't go now, Dad. I said, why? He said, it's not over until I win. We sat down and we played several other games. And finally, John Leslie won and he got up and he yawned. And he said, I'm ready to go to sleep now. What if all of us took that attitude after we face a rejection and a no, or we have a meeting and no one shows up? What if we have that kind of attitude, the cause repossessed, nobody believes in you, but you're still looking at your dream. Say to yourself, it's not over until I win. It's possible. I can live my dream. It's me. I've got to make it happen. It's not over until I win. As you run toward your dream, it's necessary that you have goals, that you write those goals down, that you plan. It's also necessary that you look for ways to always find a way to pull it out when everybody else thinks that you are defeated. But the next thing, ladies and gentlemen, I want to share with you that some of you already know that it's hard. It was hard when just over three years ago and I fell on some hard times and I was sleeping in my office. It was hard coming 
into the lobby and the security said, can we see you for a moment? And he gave me an envelope. And the envelope was from management that said, this is an office tower. Do not sleep in your office. And it was hard coming through the lobby. And sometimes they would laugh. There's a guy talking about becoming successful. He's bathing in the bathroom upstairs. He sleeps on the floor. Look at him. It was hard, ladies and gentlemen, coming to speak to people. I was behind on my bills and my dreams, and I'm saying to them, you can live your dream. It was hard, ladies and gentlemen. There were times that I doubted myself. I said, God, why, why is this happening to me? I'm not trying to steal a rock from anybody. How did this have to happen to me? And here's what I want to say to you. Don't give up on your dream. No one could have convinced me by holding on, by continuing to push forward, that one day I would have my own talk show from Liberty City, an abandoned building on a floor, never knowing my mother or father. It's a long shot. No college training, labeled, educable, mentally retarded. But I kept running toward my dream. Don't stop. Don't stop running toward your dream. There are moments when you're going to doubt yourself. There are rough times that are going to come, but they have not come to stay. They have come to pass. It's very important for you to believe that you are the one. Begin to envision yourselves as being blessed and highly favored to reach your goals that you can make your parents proud, you can touch millions of people's lives, and the world will never be the same again because you came this way. But that's why you're here, because you are the one. It's not going to be easy. It was hard laying on the floor, looking out of the window, daydreaming, saying, Les, can you do this? Can you make this happen? And something said within me, you're the one, you're the one.